Hello and welcome to week 11 of NFL predictions. My name is Seidel and I'll be going over each game this week and predicting who wins and who loses. There are a lot of upsets and close calls last week and it looks like there could be a whole lot of the same this week. Uh, we've got some big games to go over so let's just get started. Starting with the 6-3 and three Seattle Seahawks facing the 6-3 and three Arizona Cardinals. A game for the NFC West. The Cardinals are coming off of a crazy win over the Bills, 32-30, with a last-second touchdown. And the Seahawks are coming off of a close loss from the Rams, 23-16. While I do think the Seahawks' offense has been one of the best in the league, they definitely struggled against the Rams, especially at the wide receiver position. And with Russell Wilson throwing two interceptions and, one, and having one fumble, that definitely didn't help them. Uh, and while it was against a good Rams defense, this Cardinals defense has also been pretty good, only allowing 23 points and 389 yards on average a game. And the Seahawks defense definitely hasn't helped them either, allowing 29 points and over 450 yards on average a game. And the Cardinals offense has also been pretty good, averaging 29 points a game and over 432 yards on average a game as well. And the last time these two teams played was only a few weeks ago, with the Cardinals winning 37-34 to in overtime. And while it is hard to beat the same team twice, I'm going to go with the Cardinals in another last-second victory over the Seahawks, 38-37. to And now we have the 3-5-1 Philadelphia Eagles taking on the 6-3 Cleveland Browns. The Eagles are coming off of a loss from the Giants, 27-17. And the Browns are coming off of a tough win over the Texans, 10-7. And both offenses have been pretty similar this year with the Eagles averaging 22 points and the Browns averaging 24 points. And the Eagles only allowing or only averaging three more yards than the Browns on offense. The Eagles defense, ha however, has allowed less points and less yards per game. But I do think they've gone up against less competition on defense. And while the Browns, not all of their wins have looked good, but they still have gotten those wins. Uh, I'm going to go with the Browns on this one. I think it's going to be a, a close game. I think it's going to be a tough game. But I'm going to go with the Browns 24-17 to over the Eagles. And now we have the 3-6 and six Atlanta Falcons taking on the 7-2 and two New Orleans Saints. Falcons are coming off of a shootout win over the Broncos 34-27. to And the Saints are on a six-game win streak and a win over the 49ers 27-13. And while this Falcons offense has been good, averaging 27 points and over 400 yards uh, a game, and Matt Ryan with having a great season, over 2,700 yards, 15 touchdowns with only five interceptions, their defense has definitely held them back, though, allowing over 27 points a game, almost 28 points a game, and over 422 yards on average a game. Most of that coming from their from their pass defense. They've allowed 300 over 320 yards passing a game. On the other hand, the Saints' offense has been even better, averaging 30 points and over 380 yards, and Drew Brees having a fantastic season, 2,200 yards, 18 touchdowns with only three interceptions. Their defense has also been able to back them up, only allowing 23 points a game and, and under 330 yards on average a game is allowed as well, and only allowing 76 rushing yards a game. I do think the Saints offense are going to win this one. I think it could be a shootout, but I'm going to go with the Saints offense over the Atlanta Falcons offense in a 35-28 shootout win over the Falcons. And now we have the 2-6 and six Cincinnati Bengals taking on 2-7 and seven Washington. The Bengals are coming off of a big loss over the Steelers, 36-10. And Washington is also coming off of a loss, but a close one to the Lions, 30-27. The Bengals defense has been... Average at best this year, allowing 27 points and over 400 yards a game. Their offense has been pretty good this year, though, averaging 22 points and over 380 yards a game. And with Joe Burrow with 12 touchdowns, only 5 interceptions, almost 2,500 yards. On the other hand, Washington's offense has been also been lackluster, only averaging 20 points and 347 yards a game. Their defense has been a little better, though, only allowing 24 points in a little over 340 yards a game. Uh, the Bengals are really a team that could come out of nowhere with an upset, and I think they do that. I think they come out, uh, not really an upset, but I think they can win this one in a close 24-21 win over Washington. And now we have the 4-5 and five Detroit Lions taking on the 3-7 and seven Carolina Panthers. The Lions are coming off of a close win over Washington, 30-27. to And the Panthers are on a five-game losing streak and a big loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 46-23. to I do think the Panthers' defense has been a lot better this year, 
uh, averaging 27 points to the Lions, 29 points a game. And they're also averaging 30 less points allowed a game as well. And I think they've gone up against a lot better competition in terms of offenses than the Lions. While, they're, while, they're, while the Panthers offense has been a pretty lackluster this year, I think I'm going to go with the Panthers defense to be able to hold the Lions offense just enough for this Panthers offense to score. And I think it's going to be a close 26-24 to win for the Panthers. And now we have the 9-0 undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the 1-8 Jacksonville Jaguars. The Steelers are coming off of a big win over the Bengals 36-10. And the Jaguars are on an 8-game losing streak and a loss, close loss though, to the Packers 24-20. I still think the Steelers have been one of the best all-around teams this year, especially on defense, only allowing 19 points and 345 yards uh, on average a game. And their offense has also been really good, averaging 30 points and 354 yards a game. The Jaguars' defense has struggled a lot, allowing 30 points a game and four, over 420 yards on average a game. I think the losing streak goes to nine games. I'm going to go with the Steelers 31-20 to over the Jaguars. And now we have the 6-3 Tennessee Titans taking on the 6-3 Baltimore Ravens. The Titans are coming off of a loss from the Colts, 34-17. And the Ravens are coming off of a close loss from the Patriots, 23-17 in the rain. While the Titans offense has been good this year, averaging 27 points, 385 yards, and Ryan Tannehill's having a great season, 20 touchdowns, only 3 interceptions, their defense has really held them back this year. Uh, allowing 26 points and over 400 yards a game. On the other hand, the Ravens' defense has probably been the best in the league, uh, only allowing 18 points and 344 yards a game on average. And their offense has also been really good, averaging 27 points over 360 yards a game. Uh, I think this could be a close one, but I'm going to go with the Ravens, 27-21 to 21 over the Titans. And now we have the 4-5 and five New England Patriots taking on the 2-7 and seven Houston Texans. Patriots are coming off of an upset win over the Baltimore Ravens, 23-17. And the Texans are coming off of a hard-fought loss from the Browns, 10-7. The Patriots offense definitely hasn't been great, only averaging 21 points and a little over 365 yards a game. On the Texans' defense definitely hasn't been great either, though, allowing 28 points and over 420 yards a game. Patriots' defense has been a lot better, only allowing 23 points and 363 yards a game. I just don't trust that Patriots offense enough. I'm going to go with the, the Texans in a really close 22-21 to win over the Patriots. And now we have the 6-3 Miami Dolphins taking on the 3-6 Denver Broncos. The Dolphins are, are coming off of a 5-game win streak and a win over the Chargers 29-21. to And the Broncos are coming off of a big loss from the Raiders 37-12. to the Dolphins have really surprised me the past couple weeks, especially on offense, and Tagovailoa seems to only be getting better each and every week, and especially against this Broncos defense, who's allowed 28 points on average a game and 376 yards on average a game as well. I think the Dolphins come out with a win, 34-24 to over the Broncos. And now we have the 0-9 un undefeated New York Jets taking on the 2-7 Los Angeles Chargers. The Jets are coming off of a bye week, and the Chargers are coming off of a three-game losing streak and a loss to the Dolphins, 29-21. The Chargers' offense has been decent this year, averaging 25 points, but averaging over 414 yards a game. And Justin Herbert's having a great season with 19 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, over 2,300 yards passing. On the other hand, Sam Darnold has struggled with only three touchdowns, six interceptions, and their offense is averaging 13 points a game. Their defense is also struggling a lot, averaging almost 30 points allowed a game with over 400 yards on average a game as well. I'm going to go with the Chargers on this one at 29 to 21 over the Jets. And now we have the 7 and 2 Green Bay Packers taking on the 6 and 3 Indianapolis Colts. The Packers are coming off of a win over the Jaguars, 24-20, and the Colts are coming off of a big win over the Tennessee Titans, 34-17. The Packers' offense has been great this season, averaging 30 points, over 400 yards a game. Aaron Rodgers having an MVP season, 26 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, over 2,500 yards passing. Phillip Rivers also having a good season, 11 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, almost 2,400 yards passing. And this Colts defense has also been really good, only allowing 19 points and almost 300 yards a game. Uh, and this and the Packers defense also has been pretty good, 
only allowing 24 points and 352 yards a game. But it's going to be interesting to see what this Packers offense can do against this Colts defense. I do think this is going to be a great game. But I'm going to go with the Packers offense, 28-25, to just edging out the Colts. Uh, I think they win it in a close one, but 28-25, to Packers over the Colts. And now we have the 2-7 Dallas Cowboys facing the 4-5 Minnesota Vikings. The Cowboys are coming off of a four-game losing streak and a bye week last week. And the Vikings are coming off of a close win over the Bears, 19-13. The Vikings have been good on both sides of the ball this year, averaging 26 points and almost 400 yards a game on offense. Uh, they have been a little bit lackluster on defense, though, allowing 27 points and almost 400 yards a game. The Cowboys' defense has been a lot worse, though, allowing 32 points, almost 400 yards uh, on average a game. Their defense is all—I mean, their offense has also struggled this year. Only 22 points a game. They have—they have gotten almost 420 yards a, on average a game. I just don't trust the Cowboys' defense. I'm going to go with the Vikings, 30 to 20 over the Cowboys. And now we have the eight and one Kansas City Chiefs facing the six and three Las Vegas Raiders. The Chiefs are on a four-game win streak, and they did have a bye week last week. The Raiders are on a three-game win streak and a and coming off of a big win over the Broncos, 37 to 12. And the Chiefs' only loss coming from the Raiders a few weeks ago, 40 to 32. But their offense has been probably the best in the league, averaging almost 32 points, over 417 yards a game. And Patrick Mahomes is probably the front runner for the MVP. 25 touchdowns, one interception, almost 2,700 yards passing. Derek Carr is also having a good season, though. 16 touchdowns, two interceptions, almost 2,200 yards passing. And the Chiefs' defense has also been really good, uh, only allowing 20 points, 365 yards a game. And the Raiders' defense hasn't been as good, but they've all but they haven't been bad either, only allowing 26 points and 384 yards uh, a game. I just don't see them being able to pull off another win over the Chiefs. I'm going to go with the Chiefs 30-27. to I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs. And finally, we have the 6-3 Los Angeles Rams taking on the 7-3 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Rams are coming off of a big win over the Seahawks, 23-16. And the Buccaneers picked it up after their big loss from the Saints. Uh, they won 46-23 against the Carolina Panthers. And the Buccaneers offense has been really good, averaging 29 points, 377 yards. Tom Brady is having an excellent season, 23 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 2,700 yards passing. Jared Goff's also having a great season, though, 13 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, though, and he, averaged, and he has 2,400 yards passing on the year. But the Rams' defense has been solid, only allowing 18 points, 317 yards a game. The Buccaneers' offense has also been quite good, uh, only allowing 22 points, 324 yards a game. Uh, then the Rams' defense also also had the Seahawks' explosive offense to only 16 points. I do think I'm, I do think I'm going to take the Buccaneers' offense just slightly over the Rams' defense. I'm going to go the Buccaneers 27 to 23 over the Rams. Thank you for watching and feel free to post your predictions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Uh, but thank you for watching and I will see you next time.